Dr. Carlos Valdez. He's the director of the National Disaster Prevention Agency. Center. It, Prevention Center in Mexico. That's right. Dr. Valdez, tell us about Mexico's readiness as a... It's a country that is located in between five tectonic plates. Most of the country is in the North American plate. What is called the peninsula of Baja California is in the Pacific plate. And then south in the Pacific part, we have the Cocos plate. And to the, towards the Central America, we join the Caribbean plate. The Cocos plate moves and enters below the North America plate where Mexico is, and that's where we have a large seismic activity. For instance, since 1900, we have had more than 180 earthquakes, larger of magnitude 6.5. These are important earthquakes, and some of them, like one that happened in 1932, in front of the states that we call Jalisco and Colima, it was a magnitude 8.2. That particular earthquake created a tsunami and another important earthquake that happened in 1985, a magnitude 8.1 located in front of a state called Michoacán also produced a tsunami. By standards, when we look at tsunamis produced by earthquakes in Chile or by earthquakes in Indonesia or in Japan, uh, the earthquakes are smaller, so the tsunamis, it's typical. Some of the measurements in the past have told us that uh, the tsunami heights in Mexico, they get up to three meters for some of these events. And in some of them, there is a record that shows that it was probably nine meters. Nine meters is a lot. Three meters is also a lot if you don't know what it's coming. So Mexico has a, a national alert system for tsunamis that depends directly on the Navy. Uh, the information is fed by the National Seismic Network. And uh, we try to talk to the authorities at all levels so they are ready and understand when there, be, there has been an earthquake within the country that it is possible that within 20 minutes, half an hour or an hour, depending on the position, there could be some tsunami getting to the point. And also we've been trying to push towards tsunamis that come from other countries. In the case of Mexico, although we are on the Pacific because of the direction of the shores, the Pacific uh, region in Mexico, uh, earthquakes from countries like Japan or Chile, which produce these very large earthquakes and tsunamis, they go tangential to Mexico. So they don't produce a direct hit by, by a tsunami wave, but they produce a lot of movement in the shores or in the bays. And for us, the country that can produce important earthquakes and tsunamis is Colombia. Colombia, the Pacific coast of Colombia, it is well known for earthquakes that could be up to 8.1. And a part of Mexico, it is parallel to that coast. So if you have a tsunami, the wave will be moving directly towards Mexico. The problem there is that if you are in Mexico, you will not feel the earthquake. Colombia is far enough and you have to understand when you are told as a citizen that you have to move up and go away from the shore. And the first thing people would say, we didn't feel anything. So you are talking about an earthquake in Colombia. Colombia is very far. And it will take about four hours for these tsunami waves to arrive. So we've been working with people, convincing them, showing them what tsunamis like the Japan, Indonesia, Chile have done. And, and try to convince them, showing what are the safe points, what to do in the touristic areas in the coast. Uh, the first thing, if you are close to the earthquake, you will feel a strong earthquake, so you have to be first safe of the earthquake. And then right away, if you are in the coast, in the Pacific coast, you have to look 
for a building that is tall or to move towards the mountains to a safe place. So it, it is not easy, but we've been moving step by step in that direction. What then would be your advice to the Caribbean territories that are now beginning to prepare themselves for tsunami smartness? Yes. The first thing will be to, to, for the authorities to talk to the local people directly. Because uh, authorities talk to authorities and people are left at the side, they will not understand. And also uh, what we did in Mexico was to talk to people and ask them, how do you want to be warned? Because sometimes we abuse the technology and we assume and say now we could transmit information in a cellular phone. But if not everyone has a cellular phone or an intelligent cellular phone or all people or kids don't know how to use it, it's not going to be useful. So in some places they told us that they wanted to have loudspeakers or sirens. In other places they said, use the bell on the church. So we know that when somebody is ringing the bell very loud, something is happening. So by talking to people, then we understand or, or we know what is the best way to advise them what to do. And what we've been promoting is to do a lot of drills, a lot of rehearsals with people, with, old, with young people, with old people, and then moving into more sophisticated drills. For instance, one at night. It's a challenge, but you, you never know when an earthquake will happen. Uh, one if it's a holiday, one during the school day. And these things, uh, uh, at least they have been working for us for the case of, in particular for earthquakes, but we are pushing what we have learned towards the shores. We haven't completely finished, but we are moving in that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole.